this is really going a long time. I'm sorry, it's complex stuff. Um, it's just hard. I mean, this is this is complex about as it gets with integration services, and you should probably already know the more complicated something is, often the more dry it is to explain to someone. So I'm trying to do a good job of keeping it lively. Uh, and one of the ways that I've found just through the years of doing it is not making two hour long videos. Uh, I try to keep them, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and that way you can mentally take a break between them. I know it sometimes makes for a disjointed feel, but just in my experience with long with difficult topics, breaking your mind up like that helps you absorb it. I hope that works for you. If it doesn't, send me an email. Let me know. Uh, okay, so where we last left off, this was working awesome. Um, we can go back to our uh, original table. Everything is an N over here. I'll look through the table. Um, we updated a few rows, and it went through great. And I mentioned I was going to break it. Okay, uh, let me break it. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, what I need to do to make some pretty big changes to this, over 120,000 rows, um, I want to randomize this. Like, I don't want to just take the first third and make the changes there, and then the next third and make the changes there. I want to not quite randomize it, but I want to distribute these changes evenly. I want some of the first third deleted, some of the next third deleted, some of the final third of the rows deleted, etc. I want to distribute this throughout here. And one quick, easy way of doing this is with the modulo operator. So modulo returns the remainder of division from division. So for example, what is the remainder of 10 divided by 2. Okay, so 10 divided by 2 is 5, okay, but that doesn't return the remainder. The remainder is 0. If we were doing long division, um, let's see, if so if I said uh, here's 10, sorry, my pen doesn't, it's not that great to write with, and so I'm doing you know, long division. 2 goes into time, uh, 10 5 times, and there's no remainder. It goes in evenly. However, if I said um, give me uh, 10 divided by 3, okay, um, there is a remainder. Now, this returns the integer integer value. Um, so I, what we're really doing here is 10 divided by 3 goes in 3 times, 3 times 3 is 9, and then there's a 1 remainder. Okay, there's my remainder. So if I take a look at the modulo, so 10, there's the modulo operator, and it returns the remainder. The remainder of 10 divided by 2 is 0. Five, 2 goes into it 5 times. The remainder of 10 modulo 3, though, is 1. And we just saw that. Okay. So that's kind of how the modulo works. And so what you can do is you can kind of play around with this. And I can say, um, update sales order detail. Let's set... Um, status column equal U and the order quantity equal 200 where sales order ID modulo 3 equals 0. So if the sales order ID divided by 3 has a 0 remainder, then let's do an update. And that turns out of 121,000 rows, 40,000, so about a third of those numbers were able to be divided by 3 without a remainder. <laughs> it's kind of silly, I know. Now, if we change this to, say, uh, set the status equal to D, where the, let's do now by 5. So take the sales order ID, divide it by 5, 
and if there is no remainder we're going to delete that row so in this case we have 24,000 rows and if we take a look at the rows now you can see that some are U some are D some are N so you see what I mean by distributing it there's no like just full block of everything they're just kind of all distributed throughout the table okay now before we do go forward I need to make a little bit of a change here to my table so I need to go to my data warehouse table and it needs to have a clustered index here because we're going to get into a heap uh, a heap is a table without a clustered index we're going to get into some table lock issues if we do not have a clustered index on this table and preferably a primary key uh, that is a clustered index because you can notice that we are trying to access the table three different times uh, in very close proximity so we don't want to deal with uh, heap contention issues let's just call it that for the time being so I need to add a primary key and I'm just going to mimic what it was in the source it was sales order ID and sales order detail ID and uh, oh, it, okay so those tables those columns were nullable so I've got to make them not nullable so they were all ints so alter columns sales order ID now we can do this good to go and once I've done that I've built a primary key and that primary key is builds a clustered index by default behind the scenes and now that I'm able to have that all of my little pieces here are going to find it much easier to play so let's go ahead and fire away so it's just now entering in we see we have a little bit of a contention issue here hmm let's see while it's running I'm gonna just do a little drawing over here so 5527 plus 4371 is 9 and 8 and 9 and an 8 almost 10,000 and it's just stopping okay well oh we got an error message and it finished here or it looks like it's finished there we go now this is peculiar isn't it did you notice that these guys right here waited until about 10,000 rows were done and then they waited on a timeout error that's what occurred over here this was a timeout error once the destination timed out it released any locks and it was able to continue with these two now this is something that you're going to run into. You're going to deal. You're going to have to deal with potential blocking at uh, when working with your conditional split here. We have a single table. Okay, this is going to cause problems for a lot of people. You are trying to insert, update, and delete from one table in a batch. So you're trying to do a batch of updates, a batch of deletes, and a batch of inserts. Yet you want it to all happen quickly so a couple of things we can do about this one for our data flow tasks properties you can see that what it calls the defat default max a uh, buffer max rows is 10,000 that's where this 10,000 came from if I lower this down here to 5,000 for example and we run this again you'll see a different thing it won't actually add up to exactly 5,000 but sure enough you can see it comes up pretty close to 5,000 2745 plus 2033 is pretty darn close right I mean that's uh, 4778 Okay, so it's going to wait for this to time out. That's what we're waiting on right there. 
As soon as that times out, we're going to get it in the progress window here. Let's just see. I know what the timeout is, but I'm intentionally not mentioning it just yet. So there it is. There comes our timeout. And we come back over here to our data flow. And let's go ahead and take a look. And you can see it ultimately did finish. Um, coming down here, let's scroll, 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 scroll. Let's find. I know what I'm looking for. There it is. Okay. The bulk insert has timed out. Okay, so wait a minute. There are actually no insert rows being written here. Okay, there are 24,388 updates and 18,614 deletes, but there were no inserts. Why is this guy timing out? Okay, well, he had nothing actually to perform over here. What you need to do on this guy is go to his properties here, and you can either set a larger timeout or you can change the max insert commit size. By default, it loads it up and waits. It starts a transaction, waits to commit the transaction until it's all finished. Right now, though, it's also set for a 30-second timeout. I'm going to change this to 300, 300 seconds. And what that does is coming back over here. This says, uh, let me use my arrow. For you two guys, I expect these to finish in less than 300 seconds. That way I do not get, a, get to generate a timeout error from my destination. Now notice a couple of things. Notice also that you are defaulting to blocking. So if you do any inserts, you're defaulting to issuing a table lock. Okay, these are all important little pieces when dealing with a conditional split where you're dealing with multiple operations on the same table. I have now changed my timeout. Come back. If you this again. Make sure I don't hit the mute button on my microphone like I did the other day. Okay, so now here's what's going to happen. It's going to wait 300 seconds. So it's blocking them for 300 seconds. When that's finished, they can finish. Well, we don't want to wait that, okay? Do you see what it's doing? It's blocking them. So now I come back over here, go to my properties, and I got my 300 set, and I say, no, I don't want a table lock. Right. Come back and issue this again, and we're waiting for it to run, and you can see once I take that table lock off, now the thing can process. Okay, so very important that we issue that table lock. Okay. Now, let me go back. Um, let's see what we have here at the order detail. I've got in that table about 96,000 rows. I'm going to reset. I don't even know where all this stuff was. So I'm going to delete all the rows at the source. We're going to update the... Uh, I'm sorry, deleting all the rows at the destination, updating the rows at the source uh, to be the same. Notice no rows at the destination. All rows now at the source ha are back to being an insert. And let's run this again. And this time it's going to insert all 121,000 rows. You can see the update and delete went just like that. So it's finished. Now let's come back over here and do our update and delete again. And so you can see we did 40,000 and 24,000. And run it again, and you'll see it just goes straight through. We don't have to wait on this here. You can see it going. There's no blocking because we are not locking the whole table during our insert. Okay, so it's very important with your uh, either an OLADB destination or um, the SQL Server destination here. That's going to cause you some potential blocking issues, and you have to... You have to be prepared.